Rarely has the IMF appeared as hesitant as it is in the case of Pakistan, where even months of negotiations have yet to persuade the global lender to release over a billion dollars to the struggling nation. Pakistan has been desperately trying to obtain the 1.1 billion final tranche of the 6.5 billion USD bailout program finalized with the IMF in 2019. The IMF has time and time again refused to release the funds, for Pakistan has no sustainable economic structure in place to pay back the loans. After advice from the IMF, including from its chief, Kristalina Georgieva, asking the Pakistan government to heavily tax the country's rich, Pakistan presented the finance bill last week to shore up its revenues by around 650 million USD approximately 170 billion Pakistani rupees. The IMF has warned the country that it must take tough measures over a sustained period in order to prevent itself from plunging into a point of no return. Many say that Pakistan is unlikely to collect as much revenue as is the current goal. Even if the country succeeds in raising 650 million USD, is there any plan of action that can put Pakistan on a correction course? With its citizens fighting for daily survival, Pakistan is deeply indebted. The country's total external debt amounted to 126.3 billion USD at the end of 2022. This is even more worrisome when the inflation rate in Pakistan is already hovering at around 30%. As per a World Bank estimation, the debt service on all external debt in 2023 will be 26.4 billion USD. What do you have left now? There's absolutely nothing. So even the money that is going to come, it is previously sanctioned money, if it comes at all. It is previously sanctioned money and it is only going to last you till about uh, April or May. As if the country's economic uncertainty wasn't enough, the Pakistani political landscape is becoming increasingly unstable by the day. Shabazz Sharif's government and the former Prime Minister Imran Khan have been mudslinging each other. Both sides have traded blows and have accused each other of incompetence. Khan, despite being ousted as Prime Minister, enjoys huge popular support and has by and large succeeded in disrupting the daily functioning of the government. On the other side, Sharif and his coterie have increased pressure on Khan and have charged him with several strict violations. This has led to a widening of the rift between the two side supporters. Some experts have cautioned that a deteriorating political landscape, coupled with widespread poverty, could trigger a civil war in the state. Pakistan, remember, is a highly militarized society. It is an extremely violent society. I mean, you see even at the best of times how violent they are. You have mobs that go around burning people for blasphemy. You have uh, terrorist attacks all over the place. The crumbling political and economic foundations of Pakistan have paved the way for terrorism in the country to rear its ugly head. The series of events has particularly emboldened the TTP, the Tehriki Taliban Pakistan. Rival factions in Islamabad have blamed each other for the TTP's resurgence. The TTP has not only wreaked havoc across Pakistan, targeting both civilians and security forces alike, but has also staked a claim on forming government. As per various news reports, the TTP has already announced a parallel, full-fledged cabinet. The TTP poses an imminent threat as Pakistan, already severely economically weakened, is in no position to wage war against terrorism in the country. With multiple crises plaguing Pakistan's common people, one can only hope that relief will come from any front possible.